This video is for Stay Funky, who asked me if it's possible to create a macro in Cubase that allows you to add X amount of cycle markers that are four bars long, but incrementing their marker colors. Let me show you how to set this up. Before we start, if you're not using Cubase 13, when we get onto the part where I build custom PLE commands to duplicate the events and then color them and increment the color, it won't work for you because some of the commands need to be chained together in a single PLE command using the pre and post process section to work. Even if we split the individual commands up and put them all in a list in a macro, it just doesn't want to play ball. There's some odd behaviors. So I'm just forewarning you now. However, that doesn't mean there isn't some stuff that's useful here, but I'll tell you when it's about to get a bit useless for you. First of all, we need to build a macro with some basic functions and then I'll move on to the project logical editor and then I'll show you how to build the final macro that will do all the cool stuff. So let's start off by going to edit and then key commands. From here, open up your macros tab and add a new macro and then name it something appropriate. So I'm going to call it YT marker macro 01. So for this first macro, we're going to be adding some base functions before we start adding some custom PLE stuff. Now the basic behavior I want to do is to set the left locator at the cursor position, move the cursor across four bars and then set the right locator. And then once it's created a region to add the marker or cycle marker to that region. So to do this, we need to first of all type out in the search field, set left, and then from the transport list, add set left locator to project cursor position as your first command. Then to nudge the cursor across however many bars we want, in this case four bars, type out the word nudge in the search field and then in the transport list, choose nudge plus one bar, then add that four times into your macro. Next, set the right locator by typing out set right and then in the transport list choose set right locator to project cursor position. Finally to add a cycle marker within that four bar cycle region that will be created type out in the search field marker and then from the marker list choose add marker or add cycle marker on selected track. So when we run this macro it's going to set the left locator then jump over, set the right locator, create a cycle region and a cycle marker like so. Now this in itself is a really useful little uh, macro to have because you can then create another macro and add this one into it however many times you want to create a cycle marker that's four bars in length in one go. Now this next bit is where um, it's going to be a bit useless for those of you on older versions of Cubase because of how the PLE commands are going to be set up. For those of you that are going to stick around, I've actually included these four PLE commands as a single download, which is absolutely free and you can get from my website in the link in the description box below. If you do want to say thank you by donating a little bit of money for a coffee or a beer, just add that into the value, otherwise it will just check out for free and it's much appreciated if you do, but please don't feel obliged to. With that being said, let's close the key commands window for now because if we create any PLE commands, they won't show in the key commands window. And then let's come over to the track visibility agents and open up the project logical editor. Now I'm going to show you the four commands that I've created so we don't have to go through building them, but I'll talk you through what they do. So this first command is going to select the cycle marker event within the cycle region and it uses three filter targets and the filter conditions are set to select. The first filter is container type equal to event. The second filter is media type equal to marker. And the third one is position inside the cycle range. So when we use this, you can see how it selects that marker for us. Now the next PLE command is going to set a base color for that marker. The reason for this is if I don't add this step in and then when we go to increment the color, if you've got a track color that you're using, it might default the very first cycle marker as that track color. 
but if you're not using a track color, it might default that first color as the very first color in your palette, and then it might start cycling from a different point in the palette. So this is to prevent that behavior from happening. If I'm, for example, always using blue and variants of the color blue for my markers, I can set the base color of the very first cycle marker, and then when it gets duplicated, it's always going to cycle through the color palette from where I want it to cycle through from. Now this third PLE command is going to do a number of different things. It's going to first of all duplicate the event and then it's going to increment the color based on what the previous color was and then it's going to nudge the cursor across another four bars. When I run this command you'll see how it will duplicate this event but it will also increment the color like so properly every time. Now this final command here is going to deselect the event, the cycle event if it's still selected at the end. This is again just to prevent any little hiccups with behaviors in Cubase. With the PLE commands set up, I'm going to go back over to our key commands window and I'll show you what to add for this macro we started building and then I'll show you what we need to add for another macro to achieve the final result. With the original macro we built selected, type out marker and then dash, and then you'll see the four PLE commands. From here, add the set cycle region command and then add the set base color command. Now don't forget with the base color one, choose a color for the PLE command uh, in the palette in the parameter one section, and then just save over it before adding it in because the color palette I use will be different to the one you use, so keep that in mind. Once you've added those two commands in, we can now create a new macro, and we will call this YT Marker Macro 02. And what we do here is add our first macro in as a command, so YT Marker Macro 01. And then after this, we type out in the search field marker with the dash, bring up our PLE commands that we built, and then add increment color for every event you want to create. So if I want to create eight events, I need to add seven of these, because the first one will already create an event for us, and these commands are just going to duplicate it. So there's four, five, six, seven, eight in total. And then lastly, add your deselect in cycle region command. Now, if we go ahead and delete all these markers here, set the cursor where we want it to be, and then run this macro, you'll see how it now always adds those incremented colored versions of the marker eight times. Finally, I'm going to show you a quick way to find the location of where you add your PLE commands. So go back to Track Visibility Agents and Project Logical Editor, and then open up the preset browser and then scroll down to where you see Show User Preset Location. Open this up and with the PLE commands that you downloaded, just chuck them into this folder here, and then you'll be able to find them in Cubase. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't, give it a thumbs down. And as always, leave your comments and questions in the box below. Thanks for watching.